Hi again, everyone. Uh, now in this question, we will have everything together. We will have the independent voltage source and we will have the independent current source. And whatever we have learned so far, we will try to see how we can put it together to have a more comprehensive KCL and KVL uh, question. So in this question, it says that find V, which is the voltage across the current source using KCL and KVL. Okay, so rule number one, assign current in each branch that has a resistance. So we'll have here I1, I will have here I2, and then I will have here I3, and then finally I, I4. Second, assign polarity using the passive convention. So this is plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus and minus of course before that as you can see we cannot uh, simplify the circuit then assign the nodes we have node number one number two number three and number and number four okay excellent now we'll start with the kcl remember do not apply kcl to a node that has a voltage source why because I have to add another current here. So I am adding an equation in expense of another variable. So I'm increasing the size of the problem and there is no need to do that. Okay, so I will start KCL at node number one. So I have the one amp enters equal to I1 plus I2, as simple as that. And this is the first, the first equation. Node number two, no, because we have a voltage source. Node number three, yes. So we'll apply KCL at node number, number two. So we have I3 entering the nodes. I2 enter the node, so plus I2, and I4 leaves the node is equal to I4, and this is my second equation. Node 4, no, because we have the voltage source. Okay, so we end up from KCL having two equations. How many total number of equations we need? We have four unknowns. I1, I2, I3, and I4, so I need four equations. So these four equations will come from where? Will come from KVL. Okay, so now let's identify the loops that we will be using to do the, to do the KVL. Remember, we will not have any loop that has a current source. And why is that? Because I need to add another variable. So again, I am increasing the size of the problem. So this is like, uh, could be one of the loops. So I would call this is loop number one. So we'll apply KVL to loop number, number one. So again, we'll take our, our nice trip around the field. Okay, so we'll have 20 times I3 with the plus sign. So we'll have 20 I3 plus 5 i4 minus 10 equal to 0. So I will divide by 5 just to uh, uh, reduce the, uh, the, the numbers in the equation, make it easy to, to deal with. So we'll end up having, so divide by 4, so we will have, sorry, by 5. So we will have 4 i3 plus I4 equal to two, and this is my third equation. Then I will take, I could take this loop or this loop. We have two more loops. I can use one of them, okay? Then KV, I will call this is loop number two. So KVL two, loop number number two 
So again, we'll do exactly the same thing. We will have 10 times I2, so 10 I2 minus, because the first thing we see here is the minus, because we are going here counterclockwise. So we are going clockwise, not counterclockwise. So we'll have here minus uh, 20 I3. And by the way, you can go either way, counterclockwise or clockwise. It doesn't really matter. So minus 20 I3 minus 10 I1. And this is equal to 0. So let's divide everything by 10. So we'll have I2 minus 2 I3 minus I1, and this is equal to zero, and this is my fourth equation. So now I have one, two, three, four equations with four unknowns, so I can now solve the system of equations to find the unknowns. Okay, that's a very good thing. Now, as I said, now our problem is not any more circuit. Now is math. So this is why and this is some uh, a side note you have always to keep in mind. Electrical engineering has to do a lot with math. Even with the simplest course like circuit, still you have to have good math background. Okay. So now how, how we will deal with this? Okay, one thing we can do is to eliminate I4. In the first equation, we don't have I4. The second, we have. In the third, we have. And in the fourth, we don't have. So we, we can eliminate. We know I4 is equal to I3 by plus I2. So I can substitute 2 in 3 to eliminate I4. So I will substitute 2 in 3. So we will have 4I3 plus I4. I4 is equal to what? I3 plus I2. Okay, equal to 2. So we'll have I2 plus 4 plus 1 plus 5 I3 equal to 2. And this is equation is number, number 5. So now I will have this equation in terms of I1, I2. And I will have also this equation number 4 in terms of 1, 2, and 3. And number 5. 2, 3, uh, there's no one here. So we have three equations with what? With three unknowns. So now let's eliminate another unknown. Okay, let's, let's see. Uh, so we have this equation. So let's eliminate what? Let's eliminate I, I, uh, I3. Okay, so let's eliminate I3. And how to eliminate I3? Let's see how we can uh, do that. So from equation five, from equation five, we can say that your five I three is equal to two minus I I two. So then your I three you will divide by five is equal to point four minus point two I two. Okay, so now I can eliminate I3 in which equation? In equation number four. Okay, now if I eliminate it from here, so I will substitute, call this a six. I will substitute six into what? Into four. So now I have I3. I will come here and substitute its value. So what we'll have here minus I1 plus 2i2 two two minus 2, sorry, plus i2 only, there is no 2, plus i2, two two, minus 2 times i3. What is i3? 
we said that I3 is equal to this, which is 0.4 minus 0.2 I2. And this is equal to zero. So I just substituted. Okay. So now I need to collect what? I collect the terms. So we have here minus I1. And then we have here I2 minus minus so plus so plus 1.4 I2 is equal to 0.8. So I will have this equation and this equation so let's 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 go back here and rewrite them so i will have i1 plus i2 is equal to 1 so this is my first equation and then the last equation the second equation i have which is minus i1 plus 1.4 i2 is equal to 0.8 which is this equation okay so now i have two equations with two unknowns uh, I can uh, multiply the first equation, let's say, by uh, 1.4 and then subtract, or I can just add the two equations. So let's, let, 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 let's add these two uh, equations together. So add. So I can eliminate I1. So we'll have here 2.4 I2 is equal to 1.8. So your I2 is equal to 1.8 divided by 2.4 which is equal to 0.75. Okay, so this is your I2. I can find from here I1, which is equal to 1 minus 0.75, which is equal to 0 0.25, 0 0.25 amps. Okay, so this is my I1, which is equal to 0 0.25. What I want to find? I want to find V. Okay, so I will apply KVL to this loop. I will call it loop number three. Now I can apply KVL because now I want to find this voltage. And now I am done because now I can find any current if I want. But the only current I needed now is I1. I can find I3, I can find I4 if I wanted. But the only current I need is I1 because I can use this loop actually. So this loop has only I1. So KVL to loop number three we have 2.5, so this is plus minus. The voltage has the polarity, and this voltage has its own polarity. So we will have uh, 0.25 times 10, so 0.25, the current times 10, the resistance, ohms low, plus 10 minus V equal to zero. Just I took this, this, this loop. So from this, this is 2.5 plus 10, 12.5, is equal to V, so your voltage is equal to 12.5, okay? So these three examples, I showed to you using KCL, KVL. With this, you know how to deal with the current source independent and voltage source independent. And now we have like a more of a systematic way. And instead of just randomly jump here, KCL and KVL, sometimes you have redundancy in the equations, meaning you have more equations than you need. And sometimes uh, you have equation that does not help you because they are combined of two uh, equations. Uh, and sometimes you get less equations than what you need, so you get stuck, you don't know how, what to deal with. So if you apply these rules, you should be able to handle any KCL and KVL. What is left, and this is what I will be doing next, which is what if I have dependent sources? should add a nice flavor to the questions. When you have those dependent sources, it is sometimes confusing, especially if I have a voltage-controlled current source or a current-controlled voltage source, okay? So we will see how to handle these problems in the coming, uh, in the coming videos.